years later when I read that St. Paul said the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light, so it's no surprise that his ministers do also. The law of attraction, they said, was this universal principle where they said your thoughts and what you visualize and what you picture in your mind, your thoughts and your feelings are vibrations. It's an energy vibration that you're always radiating and it has a magnetic property. And so basically, in a nutshell, the law of attraction, which all of us took so seriously, said that when you are thinking good and positive and loving and happy thoughts, then you are attracting like a magnet everything that is good and happy and wonderful and joyous. And if you think negative thoughts, like worry or concern or anger or resentment, then you are going to attract, like a, like a magnet, very bad things, like an illness or divorce or your house burning down or maybe getting cancer or losing a child. In fact, Abraham and other spirits like him were always saying, there's only one reason why you have anything in your life. It's what you're vibrating. And so the reason we swallowed this whole was because they were so demonically good at making us think that this was all um, quantum physics. This, would, this could be scientifically verified, they said. In fact, I remember Abraham saying, there's not a shred of evidence anywhere in the universe that what we're saying is not true. But you see, then when so many of us could not get it to work for us, the answer was always, you are still harboring old beliefs. You still have old tapes in your head telling you that if you smoke, you're gonna get cancer. If you go out in the sun, you're gonna get a sunburn. If your kids go out drinking, they're gonna wind up in a drunk driving accident. And, and so you still have those old tapes. And this is what any time we could not get the law of attraction to work for us, it was always because we weren't somehow uh, finessing the ability to attract all that we were wanting. Well, I grabbed onto this teaching like it was a life preserver because I thought finally I could have the two things I was so desperate for, relief from my suffering and control over my circumstances. I thought I could go and teach the world how to do this. You, in, in, in fact, I did. I left my acting career and became what I called an Abraham ambassador where I would teach people the law of attraction. And I always tell people now, what you don't realize is how many demonically hideous lessons come along with that. It's not just trying to attract things with your thoughts. Abraham was always telling us things like, there is no such thing as good or bad, right or wrong. They told us, there is not some God above you dictating to you what's good or bad, right or wrong, what you should choose or not choose. None of that is true, they said. God is all that is. And, and when in the spiritual realm, before you were born, you intended to come into this place and, and use your vibrational energy to attract all that you want by just visualizing what you want and don't look at what you don't want so that you don't attract it. So now, along with the law of attraction, I was learning that my old kindergarten vision of there being a God who created us and there were things I was supposed to do and things I was not supposed to do, that was a big mistake. That that was a mythology and something very immature according to these circles that I was traveling in. So now I started teaching people as an Abraham ambassador that truth as what well, supposed truth as well. No God above you, God is all that is. And they would say to us, this is how you can know what is, if it's good for you, then it's good. And if it feels right to you, then it's right. They said, because we had something within us that they called your inner being. And your inner being, your core self, is still vibrationally attached to this high, fast, pure energy. Then they said, that's what God is. 
You could say God. We say source energy is what the spirit said. And so this inner being within you, it will let you know when, see, I'm even hard for me not to laugh, but it's just so sad you can't laugh. They were teaching us that how you know if something is good or bad or right or wrong is how does it feel to you? If it feels good, then that's your inner being letting you know that that's a good thing for you. And if it doesn't feel right, going having to go to church every day, ha having to you know say prayers on, on a string of beads that maybe doesn't mean anything, if it doesn't feel right to you, then that was not, not a good thing. That's your inner being letting you know that that's not good. Can you imagine? And so I started teaching people this as well. And one of the most devastating things they taught us, remember a few sentences ago, I said they, they let us in on the fact that if you don't want to attract things like cancer or drug addiction or a, a flood or a fire, then do not give your attention to anything that's negative or troubling or of a low vibration or a low energy. You don't give your attention to that because then you'll, with your attention, You'll only hold it in place because whatever you focus on grows and you'll have more of it and you'll attract it. I did not realize the horrible side effects that these kinds of lessons can have on people. My heart became so calloused. I, at first, this is so classic with the evil one, at First, you'll feel like you got into this because you wanted to be so loving. And I thought that I could teach my brother and all the members of my family who were so terribly afflicted mentally, emotionally, with, it, with even, like I said, addiction even, made life a, a battlefield and very, very hard and very heavy and very burdensome. I thought I could go and teach them how to think more positive and to just visualize what you're wanting. And then I thought they would stop 